Just after 6 a.m. on the 19th of February 1913, there was an explosion at Lloyd George's new house, still under construction near his golf club at Walton on the Hill in Surrey. The servant's wing was badly damaged, the ceilings ruined, doors and windows blown out. The bombs were simple canisters filled with gunpowder and the timing device very crude, simply a lighted candle stuck on top of a paraffin-soaked rag. No note was found, but the police did discover two broken hat pins and in the road outside, one woman's shoe. The main culprit was a gawky, rather awkward young redhead called Emily Wilding Davison. Within a few months, her name would echo round the world. But for now, responsibility was taken on behalf of the whole suffragette movement by Mrs Emmeline Pankhurst. Speaking that very night in Cardiff, she said, we may not yet have got the whole government in prison, but we have blown up the Chancellor of the Exchequer's house. Now, some people booed and one protester said, why have you blown him up? To which Mrs Pankhurst replied, to wake him up. Laughter, applause and hooting of horns. Even radical liberals like Lloyd George still drew the line at votes for women. On both sides, the struggle became more intense. Hunger strikes, forced feeding, windows smashed, paintings slashed, post boxes burned and telegraph links brought down. And sweet-looking little old ladies terrorising the authorities by applying for gun licences. Next target, the social event of the year, Derby Day in Epsom. Emily Davison arrived at Epsom by railway, made her way to the racecourse and then marked up her card, waiting for the all-important three o'clock race when the King's horse, Anma, would be running. The race was a flat sprint. As the horses turned into the final straight, Anma was running in third from last position. Emily Davison slipped underneath the barrier. One of the bystanders tried to grab her, but he said later that she shook herself free and cried, I will, and then she strode straight into the path of the king's horse. The horse hit Emily Davison with colossal force. She fell and rolled over two or three times, then lay unconscious. Film footage shows her grabbing the reins. Some believe she was trying to pin a banner on the horse. Davison was taken to hospital. Hate mail was to follow. This being Britain, more concern was expressed for the horse, which survived. Emily Wilding Davison didn't. On the 8th of June, 1913, four days after her protest, she died of terrible internal injuries. At the funeral, her coffin was draped in a suffragette flag. Thousands of men and women lined the streets as it passed. The coffin was flanked by women dressed in the colours of the suffrage movement. Green for hope, purple for dignity and white for purity.
These rebel women and rebel girls smashed the complacent face of Edwardian Britain and changed the image of this country around the world, no longer the stuffy, narrow, unchanging society. The suffragettes turned Emily Davidson quite deliberately into an international martyr, impossible to ignore and unforgettable. What she did to herself here was horrible, but what happened to her after her death was everything she hoped for. <laughs>